Hello, comic book family. Welcome to KJ's Porch Puppy Comics, where if you came from the big dog, stay on the porch. Glad to have you. Thank the Lord for our 112 subscribers. I do thank the Lord for all of you. I thank the Lord for all those that just casually come in and look at the channel. I thank the Lord from wherever you're looking at it at. Whether it's overseas or here in the U.S., I thank the Lord for you. Because like I said, I just want you to hear the word. You know, the comic books are fine, but we just want you to hear the word. We hear the word. And I know some people say, well, and they might say, well, if uh, KJ, then if you want to just go ahead and spread the word, then why don't you just do a, uh, you know, a gospel channel or different things like that? Well, that's all well and good. I am a preacher first and foremost. And I do love the Lord first and foremost. He is the head of my life. And I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord that he saved me one day, done a complete 180 and turned around. And the, look, the left, left all that other stuff, all that craziness, that foolishness behind. And so now I serve him. And the Bible tells us, comic book family, that you go into the highways and the hedges and compel men and women to come to the Lord. And, you know, not only in the natural sense, as I said, we do outreach, we do tent revivals, you know, whether it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, you might just be going into the Walmart or something. And, you know, I have prayed for people in, in the drive-through. Lord has blessed me to pray for people at the dollar store. You know, I mean, you just don't know what people are going through. So this is my way of helping as well. You know, it's nothing to be ashamed about. I'm not ashamed about it. And uh, like I said, I, I you know, I, I do like the comics. But I mean, when I hear people that, you know, there's different parts of the scripture, maybe they haven't heard or maybe they haven't picked up a Bible in, in quite some time, you know. But it just now I'm just trying to help people to understand that, you know, the Lord is soon to come and you got to make ready. Your soul has got to reside somewhere. Because, you know, it ain't just that once that you did, that's it. You know, no, your soul is going to have to go somewhere. And it's going to live throughout eternity. And as I've told you many times before, you can either live in heaven with God and the angels or in hell with the devil and his demons. There's only two ways. There's only two places you can go. There's only one way to get to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. We're going to have our scripture reading, but we're going to go on and show you a few books first, like I usually do. But I want you to uh, like, share, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, KJ's Porch Puppy Comics is in full effect. And when you thank the Lord, you know, tell somebody, you know, I mean, it's, it's not nothing. And I've told you it's full transparency, you know. And I thank the Lord for the friends that I've made since I've been, at, since this channel started, you know, and I thank the Lord for them. And you all know who you are. And I thank the Lord for all of you giving me some good word, some advice, even let me know about the scriptures and different things and how it's helping and how it's, you know, encouraging. And this is what we want to hear, you know, because if you know as well as I do, and I'm not trying to be a bummer, I'm just trying to be a realist. You got to understand, anything can happen. I've heard horror stories about your comic books being burnt up or comic books being, you know, busted in the water pipe and they, they get all drowned and all wet and somebody can come in and steal. And, and this, this is type of stuff here, you know, but you got to understand the mindset I'm trying to get you to see. The Lord is letting us have this time, but we put him first, you know, we put him first because, see, if when this thing is all over, if, if I leave today, if I die today, these comic books will still be here because last time I used to hear the folks say back in the day that I had never seen a U-Haul following the hearse to the, uh, to the graveyard. So understand where we at there, comic book family. And know one thing for certainly that I love you and I'm praying for you. So let's move on. Okay, now this book here is called Black Cobra. Now, uh, this is the new Black Cobra right here. This is the old school Black Cobra from the 1940s. 
And, um, you know, a lot of characters go into that, uh, what do they call it? Um, oh, I can't think of it. It's something domain, domain, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, to where they're not being used. And if they're not used for a certain amount of time, then people can, you know, take the name and they can use the characters, what have you. This comic book company is called G-R-O-K Comics. Grunk Comics. Um, I've thumbed through the book and the basis of the book is set up to where there are heroes and villains after the tribulation. So they are supposedly Bible, or not Bible, but Christian based heroes. I mean, there's no cursing in it. The art is, the art is quite good. I, I like it. I like the art. But um, the story, you know, to me, it, it deviates from the Bible. There's, you know, they talk about, you know, being a Christian and different things like that. But I said a Christian is Christ-like. And one of the guys that they was trying to turn from being a villain to a hero, you know, he was uh, dealing with, he said, well, okay, uh, so I'm going to be a Christian. And all I got to do is change it. You know, I just got to change and how I do and all this other kind of stuff. But, um, you know, it, it's it's simple. You do a complete 180. You turn away from sin. You turn away from sin. So, you know, this is the thing, folks. I thought about something like this as far as when I was drawing back in the day. I thought about trying to do, a, you know, superheroes, you know, that was uh, Christian based, you know. And, uh, you know, and I, I wouldn't I, I didn't have this type of approach. They was just they was just going to be Christian based. They, they love God. They love God's people. They didn't curse, they didn't drink, they didn't smoke, they didn't fornicate, they didn't do none of this, you know, but then you ended up, you know, you had the dilemma, okay, well, you know, you had this hero going through the streets and he's, he's, uh, he's taking out, you know, drug dealers, he's taking out supervillains and he's doing different things like this, you know, and I was trying to think, you know, how in the world could you make that work? Because we had a question one time and while I'm talking, let me put this up. That's Black Cobra, the Golden Age, number zero. This is Black Cobra, number one. And don't worry about the price sticker on there. The, 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 this book here, I got both of them for a good price. Uh, but um, I just had to use a bag. But anyway, this is the character. His name is um, Jaguar Lynx. That's what his name is. And, uh, you know, looking at it, it kind of puts you in the mind almost of a Black Panther comic book or something to that effect. But, you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I just, I'm, my the jury's still out on, on how the the whole concept of the story. I mean, if it was just a cut and dry superhero story, you know, I mean, I, I could probably deal with it. This is probably one of the reasons why I never did do a you know, the the morals of the characters that I drew or that I created, they were Christian morals, they, you know, but, you know, you still had to you walk that fine line. We had a gentleman in, uh, years ago, one of the deacons in the church had asked a question about uh, dealing with, uh, you know, with our first responders. You know, you have our military, you have the police, you know, different things, and, you know, and on most of your police calls and, and, you know, when you see them on their badges and different things, it says to serve and protect. And you know that uh, in the armed forces, you know, they have a creed that they follow, you know. Uh, and the thing is, and I said, you know, there is times now, like I said, when they do that and to thank the Lord, we praying for them. We praying for them all, you know, because we want them, you know, they going and they serving and protecting we want them to go. We want them to come back home to their families, you know, and see, there's a thing like that. You know, somebody would told me, say, well, what if somebody breaks in your house and they going to do this and this? Well, you know, I don't know, you know, and, and these are things that people are, you know, these are questions that people ask. 
And the thing is, you know, I, I tell them and they look at me and just kind of look at me kind of crazy anyway, which y'all are probably listening to this, probably think the same thing, but I have to trust God. You know, there are times I hear a mother pray on a prayer line, our international prayer line that we pray on every day. And I hear a mother say she thanked the Lord for not letting any fires break out or robbers break in. You know, um, there, there are so many things I could tell you, you know, but Jesus said he'll cover, he'll keep you, you know, but understand, even being a Christian, we're not exempt from life. Things happen. But, you know, we thank the Lord for what he didn't allow to happen. You know, maybe things with somebody might have been eyeballing. Somebody might have been trying to come in. Somebody might have been trying to do this. Are you traveling here and there? This is the reason why I encourage people to pray before you leave the house. Pray that the Lord will cover you and keep you and have mercy, his mercy, his grace. You know, his grace is unmerited favor, something that we're not, you know, we, 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 we're not really worthy of, but he gives it to us because he loves us. And when we ask him to cover, then I have to trust and believe that he's going to do just that. So again, I ain't going to say I meant to get into all that. The Black Cobra, the Black Cobra, Golden Age Zero, I like the art. I like the character. The story concept, I'm still out on. So let me get back to something that I do know. All right, here we go. Marvel premiere number 26, Hercules, the Prince of Power in his own mag. Uh, this story here, the cover, is done by Kirby. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think the interior is done by Kirby as well. But you know what? Let's take a quick look, shall we? It's a nice looking book. Shiny. Presents well. Oh, I was wrong. Comic book family. It is done by George Tusca. Bill Mantelow is the writer of ROM fame and uh, Micronauts. But that's some of the sample interior art. And as I said, the book, it presents well. This is it out of the bag, you all. Huh? I think it's a... I like Hercules as a character. You know, back in the day, I think we all had a Hercules character. We tried to draw, try to draw him a little different. You know, I think DC, they wanted to make a difference. I think Hercules' name was spelled after his mother, Hera Cleese, is what his, his name was. The DC Hercules. But that's Hercules, Marvel Premiere number 26. Beautiful book, great shape. Uh, next book is All-Star Squadron number one. Uh, these stories here, when they came out with these and I started getting them, and I'm telling you, just uh, the 1940s heroes and then the different, you know, these are different things that you just don't really see. And uh, it was a good read. It was a good read. Now, this one here come out of the dollar bin, and you can tell it's in good shape. It's got a little roll on the spine, but it is a new stand, and it's got a little bitty pinch on the spine right up here. So I guess it's a placeholder. I mean, I'm not actively seeking to find the first issue, but if I run across one, then Lord bless, I'll probably pick it up. Let me see if I can just scoot this back just a hair, folks. Just a little bit. There we go. All right, our next book is first issue of Batman and the Outsiders. Another book I collected back in the day and uh, enjoyed the book. Different characters had uh, Black Lightning in it, Katana, uh, had Metamorpho, Halo, and Geo. And Geo is Terra from the Teen Titans. That's her brother. But this was a good read, a real good read. And uh, you see it's down in the UPC box. It says, the new DC, there is no stopping us now. Well... As I was going through, looking, and I ran across this in the dollar bin. Yes, sir. 
Batman and the Outsiders, number one, newsstand. Nice book again. Uh, the, the, this, 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 I guess you would say bronze, bronze age and some silver. Um, it's probably my, my bread and butter as far as comic books and different things, you know. Uh, I mean, I hit the, I hit the, man, I, I, I went whole, whole hog in the, in the nineties. I just went hog wild and pig crazy in the nineties. Yeah, that was crazy. Anyway, let's move on. This Silver Surfer by John Byrne. I always loved that cover. Great cover. Just him looking majestic, standing on a rock somewhere or standing on an asteroid. And, uh, you know, all the vibrant colors and stuff behind him. This was a great book. You know, I always tell people, if you know, you, there's a lot of things. I know people want the big books in their collection. But a lot of times you may not be able to get the big books in the collection, but... As T-Rabbit said so many times, folks, and I've quoted it so many times on this channel, collect what you like. Collect what you like. You know, I mean, if you got a book that ends up being worth a lot of money, then thank the Lord. If you, if not, then again, thank the Lord because you got what you got. And I'm telling you, I'm learning more and more every day, every day. Our scripture reading this morning, comic book family will be coming from 1 Peter in the New Testament, 1 Peter, the, let me see, where was we at here? Because I had it wrote down. The fourth chapter, and we're going to start at the 16th verse. It says, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Okay, listen to me now. 17th verse, for the time has come that judgment must must begin at the house of God, at the house of God. And if at first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Did you catch it? Did you catch it? The 18th verse. If, and if the righteous scarcely be saved. Now that's what a lot of people think, you know, you got to go back and you got to do your research. Because the Bible says that the Lord is coming back for his church. He didn't have no kind of mocker, whether it's uh, Church of God in Christ, First Methodist, First Baptist, uh, First Catholic, whatever. He didn't have no mocker on it. He said he's coming back for his church. And the prerequisites for that comic book family, he said his church without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. He's already set up what needs to be done in order for you to make it to God's heaven. You got to come in through Jesus Christ. You got to live for Jesus. You can't do anything that's going to, uh, you know, bring Jesus to, you know, crucify him afresh, you know, to bring shame on his name. You're going to live. So the Bible, you know, those saints used to sing a song uh, back in the day said, I want to live. So God can use me anytime, Lord, any day. I don't own the rights to that either. But anyway, it says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? 19th verse, wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So this is the thing I keep trying to let you know. When you're going to live for Jesus, it's not nothing manby pamby. It ain't nothing that, you know, it's just, it's just wishy washy. No, you're going to do it. And you're going to go through some things. The Bible says the righteous will suffer persecution. Now, that may not be the persecution that people might have went through back in the day. You know, some of the disciples, what, some of them was beheaded, some of them was stoned, some of them was whipped, some of them, you know, all this type of thing for the gospel of Jesus Christ. But they did not turn back. And this is what God is looking for now. He's wanting to, basically, I feel like he's trying to let me, uh, help me to let you know that if you turn your life over to Christ, no matter how bad things get, in spite of it, you got to stay with Jesus Christ. He is the only way. You have to trust the process and trust the plan. You know, I said one time on the on the Bible uh, Bible study on the on our channel 
that, you know, the Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. Basic instruction before leaving earth. Any and everything you want to know about how to live for Jesus is in his word. And there is no substitute. That's why he said you don't add to or you don't take away. If you do that, then you're cursed with a curse. Anyone that's preaching or teaching anything outside what comes out of his holy word, you're cursed with a curse. So go back and read 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. Read the whole chapter. Read all of 1 Peter. It's a great read. It's a great read. And if you don't get to know, if you don't know Jesus Christ and the parting of your sins, if you feel that he's drawing you, this is the time that you need to come to him. Don't wait. Don't tarry. You come to him. You can stop right where you are and say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. If you feel that he's pulling you, he's nudging you. He's not going to force you, but you'll feel a drawing taking place. And if you feel that drawing taking place, even if you done backslid, you can come and ask the Lord to forgive you. But you got to ask you, when you ask him to forgive you, then forgive yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. And know that he's going to be with you. He said, I'll be with you even until the end of the earth. He'll do it for you, comic family. I'm trying to tell you. I know sometimes you can mute it and you can kind of breeze through it real fast because we don't want to hear that. We just want to look at the comic books. Well, that's all well and good. But understand, as I told you one time, even if you hear the word, even if even if the, you, you just decide that one day you get sick and tired of getting sick and tired, you know, you're going to have to understand you're going to have to come back to the source. And that source is Jesus Christ. Can't no man or woman help you. They may think they can. They, you may want them to. But only Jesus Christ can make the difference in your life. Trust me on that, comic fam. All right. Next book, we have a silver surfer number one. And this was the run that ran, I think it ran, let me see, 50, 75. I think it ran 125, maybe 126 issues, something like that. But it's Ron Lim art. I love this cover with him holding over and uh, Galactus in the background. It's it's a great cover. Now, I don't have all the books like I used to. Like I said, I'm I'm weird. I'm, I'm you know, picking and nitpicking and, you know, and... Uh, you know, just trying to make sure I want a collection that I want. You know, while I'm yet here, I want a collection that I, I'd like to have. Like I said, I'm not actively seeking. You know, I'm finding myself picking up a lot of different uh, uh, 70s and 80s independents. Uh, some that just have good art. I, you know, I try to thumb through them, make sure it ain't no uh, questionable things in there. But, uh, you know, stuff like that. I'm looking for now. It's a four-issue set called uh, Daikashu. I think you've heard me talk about it. It's a black and white book. It's a Godzilla-type creature. He kind of puts you in the mind of uh, a combination of Godzilla and Yangiri, uh from the creature from uh, 20, was it uh, 20 million miles to Earth? He kind of puts you in that sort of mind of that type of creature. But... Um, it's good. It's it's kaiju goodness. I mean, it's it's great. It's great. But I guess with kaiju now going to move, everybody's picking up different stuff like that. So, you know, I've got one. I've got three or four. I can't remember. But uh, I said if I run across them, because books like those, you either have to order them online because a lot of people don't really carry a lot of stuff like that anymore. You know, if, if it's not hot and and, uh, you know, or whatnot, you know, uh, you know, sometimes people don't even deal with them anymore. But like I said, I'm glad to get stuff like this because that's what I'm into. All right. We're going to jump into some, uh, Jack Kirby. Uh, <laughs> this is a set you all, I have never thought I would even try to put this set together, but like I tell you, my tastes are changing and it's getting weird. And then I found out that a major character made his appearance in this storyline. And I know I'm not talking about Thanos and uh, Iron Man. No, I'm not talking about that. No, I'm talking about uh, this book right here. A 2001 A Space Odyssey. 
I haven't really seen all of the movie, but uh, the music itself, the the score, it, it was uh, you know, you know the score. Uh, I, I really liked it, <laughs> and and it was a good, it's a good book. So I, I I seen these, and I figured, hey, let's pick them up. And you see, the books are nice. It's a newsstand. Books in great shape. Corners are sharp on it. I mean, it, it looks well. You can see for yourself. I don't have to give you, you know, unless it's something like, uh, you know, there's some spine ticks or different things like that. But here is issue two, and it does have spine ticks. And a little fading, but it's a newsstand as well, and, and these books present well. I said when I get them all lined out, maybe I'll give them a read and see what's up, but I couldn't pass them up. When you find them all in one place, there's number three. Jack Kirby at his best. Here's number, see, I need a four. Here's number five. I mean, it makes you wonder what Kirby was thinking about back in the day. Look, I, I got a confession, comic book family. You know, I like Black Panther. I, I really do. I, I, I like the character. Jungle Action, to me, had to be probably the best Black Panther comic book to me to date that holds up even now. You know, and uh, I just like you know, T'Challa. I like the way everything was set up with him. I like, you know, the characters that he fought. You know, when he joined the Avengers, you know, I, I I liked him in the Avengers too. But, you know, when he was in the jungle action and doing different things, I thought it was pretty cool. Now, the confession I want to make is simply this. When Jack Kirby done the, uh, I think it was a Black Panther run. I think it went, he did all of them from 1 to 12, maybe. Or 1 to 13. I think the book only went like 15 issues. But he did like 1 to 12 or 1 to 13. To this day, and I've had ample opportunities to pick up an issue one or something like that, I couldn't get past the way he drew Black Panther. I, I, I just, it just, it just, it does, I don't know. I don't know. Here's issue number six, but that's my confession, you all. There's the reason why I don't own a, uh, what is it, a 70, what is it, 78? 1978 Black Panther done by Jack Kirby. That's the reason why I don't have any in the collection. I, I can't do it, y'all. I just can't. I, I, and I don't know if it's just not only the way he drew Black Panther, but the storyline. I, I have no earthly idea. I, I, I don't know. All right. That's number six. Here is number seven. Now, those of you out there who know about these particular books probably know who the character I'm talking about that was introduced in this book. We're almost there. That's issue number seven. Again, still newsstand. Why is there another issue number seven, you may ask? Well, it's because it's a Mark Jewelers variant. Sometimes you run across them. I'm not, like I said, I'm not actively seeking these things. Sometimes they just pop up. So I decided to go ahead and keep it. You know, if I get tired of the set and want to trade it off, then there's a Mark Jewelers variant in there as well. All right, you all. That's number seven, number eight, and did I make it wrong? I don't know if I did it wrong or not. But anyway, here he is. Machine Man. Now, this is the book where Machine Man has made his appearance. And, uh, you know, he's gone, he's gone called by X-51. And... Uh, it was a good character. I always liked Machine Man. And uh, now, I can collect Jack Kirby doing Machine Man. I can collect Jack Kirby doing 2001 Space Odyssey. I can collect Jack Kirby doing Forever People uh, or uh, New Gods or, or Commandy. I, I, I'm good with that, you all. I'm good with that. But for some odd reason, it's just something about, I don't know. But anyway, that's number eight. Here's number nine. Let me look at that. Okay, here's number nine. I've got two number nines. I meant to crack it open and make sure I'm looking at the top, but I don't think this is an, uh, a Mark Jewelers. I think I just accidentally picked up another number nine, but hey, it's okay. 
The books are in nice shape. You can tell it. You can look at it. Real nice. And here is issue 10. Like I said, I'm probably, whenever I get some free time, free, free time, I might take and rebag and board everything after I get my bags and boards built back up. And uh, once I get them built back up, I should be in pretty good shape, I do believe. And the last book I want to show you, comic book fam, I was showing you Culls last week. And I forgot one. He was stuck in the Conans. But there is Cull number five, the Conqueror. Severin cover. You remember I told you I like the little block when they put everything in the little block and the trade dress is just prominent. I like it. I like it. That's just what made uh, getting 20 cent Marvel books just really stuck out for me. 15 and 20 cent Marvel books, man, that just what made it pop for me. You know, so that's all I got for you today. Uh, we're right at the 30 minute mark. I'm trying not to hold you no, no too long. I'm, look, I'm, anytime you come to this channel, look to go at least 30 minutes or a little bit longer, especially when I'm going to take time the Lord bless me to do the scriptures with you. But this was episode 146. And uh, I thank the Lord for you tuning in. Remember to read the first Peter chapter four, read the whole chapter. But if you just want to go back and read those verses I read, it's 16 through 19. And just remember, if you're not right, get right with Jesus Christ. Get right with Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's that simple. Sometimes men make it hard, but it's just that simple. When you come broken and contrite, and you, you know, like I said, you sick and tired of sick and tired of going through the same old, same old day in and day out. And there's no change and your life is just, just, you know, you feel like you self-made and you're doing this. Understand, understand. Let me tell you a little saying we used to say back in the day. Now, this is not nothing we said in church. This is just, well, amongst the brethren down on this end. Life will sometimes smack the taste out of your mouth. So you got to understand you need somebody and that person is Jesus Christ to help you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you for the family on today. I thank you for the 112 subscribers. I thank you for those that casually come in and look and watch. Let the scriptures radiate. Lord, you said your word will not come back void. Lord Jesus, let them see every time they turn the TV on, look at the news, Turn their phones on and look at what's going on on their phones, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, don't let them forget you in the name of Jesus. Let them turn to you, Lord Jesus. It's not in the guns. It's not in what this one say they're going to do. That one say they're going to do. It's not in none of that. It's in you, Lord Jesus, because they have to understand that their soul has to reside somewhere. And there's only two places. Let them understand, Lord Jesus. Let them understand. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I thank you for all the friends that I've made since I've had the channel going. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for my friends and my brotherhood here. Lord Jesus, I love you today, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity. Lord Jesus, keep them, lead them, guide them, cover them. Children going to school, whether they're going to work, spouses going to work, protect them when they're sleeping, protect them in their homes. Lord Jesus, don't let none of us get lackadaisical. Don't let us get lax or desensitized to what's going on around us. Lord Jesus, you said there will be wars and rumors of wars. We see it taking place, Lord Jesus. And it's in your word, the scriptures are being fulfilled. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity again. And I love you because you first loved us. You first loved me. In your holy name, I do pray. Thank God. Amen. I love you, family. Until the next time, talk to you later.